So before we hear from our guest today, Emmanuel Lopez, let me tell you a little bit about him. So Emmanuel is also known as Motivator Man. He's an award-winning movie blogger, illustrator, author, and motivational speaker. Through social media and motivational presentations, he's provided hundreds of Hollywood movies as empowering, inspirational learning tools for over 15 years. Emmanuel has been featured in the Washington Post, the New York Times, the Globe and Mail, CBC Radio, and now the Louise H. Reed Show. Uh, his work, new website, moviesformotivation.com, features his top movie lists to help people increase their passion, perseverance, resilience, leadership skills, and indestructible optimism. I mean, how amazing does that sound? The website also features a heartwarming music video that he produced of dozens of memorable movie scenes accompanied with a song he wrote and recorded called In the Film. I myself have had the opportunity to view that and I'd encourage all of you to, to check that out, moviesformotivation.com. You may be inspired. You might know someone else who may be inspired. So share the love. Um, Finally, both the song and the movie clips represent the tried and true tools and methods Emmanuel teaches and personally uses to cope with clinical depression and difficult times. Welcome to the show, Emmanuel. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be on your show. I, I have to say I have been looking forward to this since we connected, I think it was even before the summer. Yeah. Um, yeah. You've got this, this passion and this energy that just shines through all that you say and you do. So I'm really excited about exploring your story and what you do now in, in, in more detail over our, our chat. Right, right. Yeah, I'm excited to share it too. I, I have a passion okay. for movies and, and uh, so I'm going to be extra hyper as we go along. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. So... I love your angle on motivating us, others through movies. So why movies? Well, I've actually loved movies all my life. And um, uh, my, my mom and dad, they love movies. So they instilled that passion in, in my brothers, my brother and sister and I um, growing up. Um, and then um, during high school, movies like Star Wars, uh, the original Star Wars, <laughs> before it was called A New Hope, inspired my creativity so much that I, it, it led to a really successful illustration career. Um, the creativity in that movie, it just in, it inspired me to be as creative as possible. I'd never seen anything like it. And um, so, you know, that, that and movies like Close Encounters of the Third Kind, they just inspired my imagination. So, so that, yeah, that was the beginnings. Uh, that was of, the beginning. I love that. And it's always interesting because, I mean, this tip stuff typically does go back to our childhood, doesn't it? Where we get this spark of something. Yeah. And I always find it interesting then how that evolves. So that was the spark. That's sort of how the inspiration was born. Yes. Walk us through a little bit more about some of the things that you've gone through in your life that has led you to where you are now. So walk us through that a little bit. So yeah, that um, the my passion for movies, thankfully it was always there because there was a point in my life when um, I was actually dealing with clinical depression, but was not diagnosed. So I didn't know what was wrong with me. And, and that ended up um, seeping into my music which, which I was, was recording in the 90s, and it, it really had a cinematic quality to it. But it wasn't until the year 2000 when I experienced burnout from my illustra illustration career that I ended up um, watching movies from my couch. You know, I just, I couldn't get up. There were days that I felt hopeless and I didn't know what was wrong with me. And, and movies like The Shawshank Redemption, mm -hmm that I'd seen before or Groundhog Day that I remember seeing when it first came out would come on the television. And, and suddenly I was riveted in the scene in Groundhog Day where Bill Murray's character is also lying in bed because he can't break out of this, the Groundhog Day loop, um, made me instantly connect with them. Right. Like I just said, oh my God, 
that's that's me like that's me in this state of depression and then from there I, I felt like I was on his journey and as, as I lay there on the couch I, I was actually learning about how he breaks out of his Groundhog Day loop you know he started to use this time as a positive time to better himself to learn how to play the piano or um, ice sculpt and um, and then also start thinking about others first, you know, how he could right. be helpful and uh, create random acts of kindness. And by the end of that movie, I, I, I was just so full of hope wow. that, you know, I got off that couch and was able to to just think, OK, what can I do today? You know what? what? Yeah. What can I do today? Yeah. So I think that is so that's so powerful. Um, it's what can I do today? I think that can be applied in so many situations, whether it's the one that you described that you went through. Yeah. Um, whether it's I reflect back on my my days as a as a as a well, I am a mother when my boys were young. Um, what can I do today? Wow. Would have been a really good thing at that time. Yeah. Um, people who are striving to achieve more in their life, depend, regardless of where they are in the journey, what can I do today yeah. is a really, really powerful question I think can be applied really to anyone. Absolutely. Those are, those are what, a, you know, what's, what can be turned into an affirmation as well. You know, things that you can write on a post-it note and put it on, on your fridge or, you know, in the, the bathroom, bathroom uh, next to your bathroom mirror. You know, yeah. Like that that uh, that can remind you. Uh, so when you asked yourself that question, what can I do today? What 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 did you do? Is there maybe uh, someone listening right now who thinks, oh my gosh, this man is speaking to me. Emmanuel is speaking to me. What did yeah, you do? yeah, yeah. Well, it's uh, you know, one of the things is is usually like, what what movie can I see today? You know, um, I mean, in that situation back then, it was. You know, how could I be productive today? How could I get back to work today? And and some of the times was like, okay, you know, I'm going to go for a walk. And walking actually has become a a daily um, tool. And and it's not just exercise, but you know, I, I I'd learned that vitamin D was so important and is ideally best received from sunshine. Mm -hmm. So. Um, it's become a daily practice, and and I remember, I remember that that was one of the things that I started to do was just to get it because I I, I I it's a live workspace that I was at at the time, and it's usually it's where I'm at now in a different spot, but to be able to just get out of this live workspace was was amazing. You know, just getting fresh air is 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 rejuvenating on so many levels. I I've uh, I've been challenged with mild depression since I was quite young wow. um, and I have learned too that being outdoors and the vitamin D as well being so yeah. important to the point that I, I have a I have one of those lamps that supports me through the winter months when there isn't as much daylight so yeah. uh, I, I you know I, I echo the the need for, for vitamin D in the best most natural source which is the sun. Well I'm glad you brought that up because I just wanted to say that um, when I was finally diagnosed with clinical depression uh, in 2015, um, I'd actually gone in uh, to see the psychiatrist um, feeling that it was seasonal affective disorder that I had. Now, they did, they did um, uh, diagnose me with dysthymia, which is, uh, is another name for uh, persistent depressive disorder. Mm -hmm. um, but since then, I still believe that uh, SAD is what what I have, and um, so so I want to share that with your listeners is that you may have a combination of different uh, different uh, mental uh, illnesses that that can can be uh, solved and coped with. It's just a matter of of um, being open to it that that whatever you're dealing with uh, is 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 solvable. Um, because like I said, in 2000, I had no idea that I had depression. Like that was, that was just not even part of what my thoughts were. It was just, right. why am I feeling 
uh, hopeless or not able to move or have a lack of motivation and, and have these ruminating negative thoughts that just kept going and going. And it, it just, I mean, I was shocked and, and emotionally almost traumatized <laughs> hearing those words that I had oh. clinical depression. But it was definitely the beginning of, of the journey upwards. And I think the more that we talk about these things, the, the more it serves ourselves and others to, yeah. to reduce the stigma uh, and make it okay for people to reach out for help. The, our, our conversation, Emmanuel, is quite timely for two, a couple of reasons, actually three reasons that we're talking this week. I think, I think it was yesterday that was, certainly in the US, it was um, suicide prevention Day. Yes, that's right. So I think it's interesting that we happen to have our conversation booked today just on the heels of that and us talking so right. openly yes. about this. And, yes. and I absolutely want to encourage any listeners who maybe challenged it themselves to reach out to somebody. And if that somebody happens to be me or Emmanuel, because you don't know who else to reach out to, please contact us. Yes. Please reach out to someone. Thank you for sharing that because today being September 11th, has so much history to it. And uh, I love the idea that we're speaking on this day of tragedy to inject it with so much hope and, and, and resources. Like I feel it's been my calling to create moviesformotivation.com uh, to be this resource for anyone around the world who are suffering or feels alone and, oh, and it, not specifically for people with clinical depression, just anyone who's going through a difficult time to find a movie that I've listed that um, could make a huge difference in their life. And, and I actually spent months uh, reorganizing uh, over a thousand movie tips that I wrote on my blog, wow. um, not just alphabetically, alphabetically but uh, specifically in motivational themes uh, for instance, I've broken it down into my top 20 movies for indestructible optimism. Or uh, if somebody wants to read more about resilience, I've written uh, my top 20 list there. And just by click of a button, they can go through and see a movie title, like uh, say like in Resilience, um, Rocky Balboa, uh, which is my favorite of the series. Um, it just touched me so much and empowered me because this was specifically a story of how Rocky is now in his late fifties and how, you know, he's had to deal with the death of his, his wife, Adrian. Yeah. Sorry, spoiler alert. If anyone hasn't seen it, <laughs> but. Well, if uh, you haven't seen it folks, I mean, you yeah, gotta get with the times really. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but it's how he stays resilient and, and how um, he stays strong, like at that age, you know, and, you know, I'm in my 50s now. And, and so these movies I wanted to share uh, on this website so that it's just like, wow, you know, somebody might not have seen it, but, but can read how it, it affected me in a positive way. And then they'll go out and watch it, you know, and, and, and inspire them. It's, it's quite funny how, you know, you mentioned this about movies being a source of inspiration to you. What I find funny is how I've never looked at them that way. And now that you, now that I know you and I have visited your website and enjoyed your lists and enjoyed your own uh, video movie that you made, I think to myself, how did I not? <laughs> how, how have I not been sort of motivated and inspired? And, and so now that, um, I, now that we have met and had this kind of conversation, I think I'm going to be watching movies through a very different lens in the future, which I think is very neat and interesting. Oh, I love how you put that. Look, you know, with the double entendre of looking through it through a different lens. That's <laughs> that, that, that my, my job is done for today. <laughs> I am, Fantastic. I things, yeah, uh, see movies in a new light. <laughs> yeah, so is our interview done then or? Oh, oh no, continue? there's lots more, lots more <laughs> we, can, we can do to help others. <laughs> um, so another thing that I wanted uh, to sort of bring forward and think it's very, ser I mentioned the, the serendipitous nature um, of us talking today yes. is that it's also a special week in Toronto and you're in Toronto. So yes. talk to yeah. us about the, the significance of us talking today. Oh, well, yeah, the Toronto International Film Festival is on and uh, it's, I mean, it's just the energy of TIFF is 
always it's always in the air and and so that's why I, uh, it's it's another great reason why we're speaking during during this time because of the, the positive energy and 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 definitely you know the number of potential movies that could be used as inspirational tools will will come out of this this festival as it as it always does and absolutely uh, yeah I love it I think and that was again very serendipitous and then the other thing that I have not mentioned to you is um, a colleague and I are traveling to Hollywood tomorrow. So I thought that was really, funny Take too. me, take me. I know. <laughs> so we're traveling to Hollywood tomorrow for a, for a coaching conference. I'm a, tr I'm, I'm a, I'm a really big believer in continuing, continuous improvement and growth yes. and surrounding yourself with other high vibing people who help you be a better you. Yes, so that's the absolutely. purpose of me going to Hollywood. I've never been before. And I just thought oh, that was wow. interesting how the week that we're speaking that yeah. I'm off Hollywood. So I'll, I'll take photos, Emmanuel, and I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll send them your way. Oh, please do. Please do. Yeah. <laughs> and if you meet some stars, you know, definitely get a selfie with them. There we go. Um, so I want to go back and talk a little bit more about something you mentioned um, that when you were starting to get out of your Groundhog Day, you yeah. recognize the importance of vitamin D and being outside regularly. Yeah. I think I'm a, I'm a firm believer in morning rituals. And if it's not morning rituals, rituals throughout the day that keep you grounded yeah. um, and healthy, mentally, yeah. emotionally, physically. What other rituals or routines do you have in your life that serve to provide that to you? Uh, you, you I'm glad you asked that because I absolutely love affirmations. You know, whether it's written down um, or even one of my favorites, and this is what I do almost every morning, is listen to um, is to listen to audio uh, affirmations. And YouTube has so many that you can choose from, you know, just do keyword searches, affirmation and whatever topic you're looking for, because uh, for me, it changes. Uh, there was a period when I was doing uh, inner child healing. Hmm. So I was doing, I was doing, uh, I found uh, some audio affirmations on that. And then there was some on um, health or there was some on, on, uh, you know, but my purpose, you know, because uh, that's something that uh, I'm, I'm constantly uh, finding because as an illustrator, it was it was clear, you know. As I've mentioned, Star Wars really uh, pumped up my my passion for drawing, and and that lasted uh, for about fifteen years. And and yet, like my inner soul was wanting to do more, and uh, and then suddenly I'm uh, I'm dealing with this this depression in the year two thousand, which by the way lasted an entire year. Wow, and that was. The darkest year and why movies got me through so so movies are are part of my daily ri ritual it's uh uh I, it, almost through meditation i just say you know to the universe it's like what what movie do i need to see today you know which because i they not just inspire me but they always has have an answer to how do i deal with this relationship communication problem that I have today, you know, with, with a friend or a family member. And, and, and suddenly I'll, I'll have this thought of seeing this movie, whether it's seeing it a, a movie again, or, um, or seeing something new, it's, it's, it's really magical, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, so, so that's, so meditation, quiet meditation, and it's not long meditation, it's just closing my eyes and, and breathing. And, you know, even for five minutes yeah. and just saying, okay, you know, like uh, being open to whatever uh, is the next step to do today and, or what movie can I see today? You know, to I, I love the power of what you just shared in terms of having knowledge of the, the question you can ask or the things that you can do if on a day that you're not really feeling like yourself, on a yeah. day where you wake up and say, I don't feel like myself today. Yeah. What you've just described are things you can do and say and and listen to, to help move that needle a bit. Yes. There's no day, not every day is going to be glorious and happy. And to be honest, that would be really boring if, if mm -hmm. that was the case. Yeah. If that was the case, we wouldn't be speaking today and you wouldn't have moviesformotivation.com. Yeah. 
right? It was through those darkest moments that this greatest joy has been given to us in the world. And that's you having provided movies for motivation.com and yes. then all the other stuff that you do. Why don't you talk to us a little bit about what else you do and how else you work to um, bring movies to a broader audience? Well, um, yeah, other than writing my blog once a week, which is, which is actually another tool uh, for, for healing, is to be able to, to write. Uh, I'm, I, I've always been passionate about writing, so to be able to do that is, is one, of, one of the things that I love doing. Um, and, you know, the next step is, after I write my blogs, is, is also to share it on social media, which has become not just a passion, but also a coping tool for my clinical depression, because it, it has never gone away. I, I, uh, I've just learned how to cope and, and maintain my productivity. And so my passion for Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter, and blogging, those are, those are my top ones, have allowed me to stay in contact with the world and, and share more more motivational tips. So it, it, it wouldn't be just a movie tip. It might be just this silly, hilarious video of a dog <laughs> being excited over this new, you know, ball <laughs> contraption. Uh, I, this is recent, you know, and, and sharing, and sharing that, you know, um, on Facebook. Uh, and, and so the interesting thing about, you know, this passion of, of how social media can, can share positive content is, is that uh, other other entrepreneurs, uh, specifically speakers and coaches, contacted me about my content and asked if if I could help them with their own social media. And and, and again, that's just me being creative and and my passion for helping others. So so that's kind of I actually have another superhero name, and it's called Social Media Wingman. And so that, <laughs> that's something I actually don't promote. Um, but it's there, you know, for people who, who want some creative content developed. And uh, so, so yeah, if, any, if there's any other fellow speakers or coaches out there, um, check out socialmediawingman.com. Um, I love it. My other, love superhero, it. my other superhero persona, which is, again, uh, not just a way of helping other people, but it's, it's a passion. It, and passion is fuel, fuel it is. for energizing me when I'm down or or just needing some up up uplifted positive energy and so I think you're just such an amazing example of someone who has combined passion and purpose and really uh, isn't that what we'll we'd all love to do uh, I, I, I I felt the same thing you know a year and a half ago when I decided to leave the corporate world and start and follow my passion and it takes courage to do that it, it does. I do. It, it does. Uh, I, I'm sure you you had like those voices in your head saying, you know, oh, no, I shouldn't uh, because of this or the security or lack of security. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Those voices are loud. And some of those voices are your own voices, like were my voices. And some of them were outside vo voices. Yeah. My mom. Sorry, mom, if you're listening, plug your ears. <laughs> it was my mom's, I heard my mom's voice, whether she was saying it or whether I was just creating, you know, imagining what my mom wishes she could say. Yeah, yeah. Um, all from a good, from a good place with good intent. But this, it's very noisy. It's yeah. very noisy. So it I, is. I, and and I, I wonder, how did you, how did you get to the point where? So I understand that you know when you experienced this deep dark depression and you were there for a year, that that was sort of how your your enjoyment for movies. Um, your illustrative background kind of collided and came together. But yeah. tell us how then you actually started to be what you have and what so, you are today. When I started to become Motivator Man? Yeah. <laughs> uh, when, yeah. That, when was Motivator Man birthed? It was actually birthed, um, I think, a couple of years after the year 2000. Um, because what happened was friends were asking me, who I mean, they knew I was going through a difficult time. They knew I was going through something, and and they just asked me like, "How how are you getting through this?" You know, and I said, "Movies." I said, "Movies were saving my life every day, and and um, it's helping me to continue with my illustration business." And and they said, "Wow, you know what? Can you can you do like can you speak to our school on that?" And and I remember one of the first 
jobs uh, was being asked to speak at the Art Institute of Boston. And I'd never been there before. And uh, it was so exciting, you know, being invited down there to speak about my art and speak about, about movies. Um, but also that I was getting paid to do it. And, <laughs> and the thought that somebody was going to fly me down there and pay for all my meals, uh, specifically lobster, which I, I had to have lobster in Boston. <laughs> I had that almost every night I was there. Um, I was speaking not only to students, but also my peers, there were, it was combined with uh, all these educators across Boston. So it was one of the first times that I combined talking about my, my career as an illustrator and also, you know, the, the tools that motivated me. And so that, that, that just grew, you know, I ended up speaking at the Royal Ontario Museum many times and and then uh, the uh, the ministry uh, Ontario Ministry of Finance started getting me into the, the corporate world and and um, you know one 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 common thing Louise that I wanted to mention is that I love how people in the audience's eyes light up when I ask how many of you love movies mm. you know and then there's just like ah, me you know they, they turn into <laughs> kids and then I instantly you know bond with them. You know, and it's like, it even the, yeah, everyone watches movies. It's just yeah. a, it's just a beautiful way. It's such a simple way to connect in a meaningful manner. Yeah. It's brilliant. I think there's, there's genius in simplicity. It, it, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, and then years later, you know, I discovered that the, the CEO of TELUS uh, um, used movies as well uh, to, to inspire his managers and, and had, um, shown um, Master and Commander uh, the, with Russell Crowe uh, about leadership and, and teamwork and, and had them watch it, you know? And that's actually something that I enjoy doing too. You know, I get hired um, by organizations at, to, to do movie screenings. And then we do uh, a discussion afterwards uh, and, and just share the experience of what I feel, you know, because when I'm watching a movie and, and sometimes I'm, almost catatonic, you know, when my depression symptoms are extremely high, it's, it's difficult for me to move the, the ruminating of negative thoughts and feelings that you, that you'd mentioned earlier are so rampant and the hopelessness is so high that all I can do is just sit down and trust that the movie I'm watching is what I'm supposed to watch. And within the 90 minutes or two hours, my whole body and mind changes, you know, I get invested in the characters in the story. And, and it takes me to another world. The ruminating of, of negative thoughts stops and it gives my brain a chance to just rest. And then in that quiet time, it, which is why we meditate, is when the answers come to us, you know, whether it's external or, or from like our, our inner voice. And I always get an answer. Uh, I always get an answer to like, how do I move forward? Um, and, and I feel better. I just simply feel re-energized. Yeah, in those moments of stillness. Yes. There's a, there's, there's a lot of brilliance um, and uh, you're right, and, and answers come. I, I think that you would be very upset then to hear me say that I fall asleep during movies. Uh, <laughs> well, you I know do. what? I actually, there's a positive to that, which will make you feel better. Um, because I, I did talk to people um, you know, spiritual, spiritual people who believe in like how energy affects, affects us. And that um, the answer that was coming at those moments that you fell asleep were so powerful, you know, that it actually uh, does seep into your subconscious, but consciously, you know, you're, it's, it's too much. Um, anyways, this is just a theory uh, um, that, uh, that I, I tend to, to believe in, because there are times that I've done that too. And it's just because your, your physical body and mind and emotional body, it's, it's just too much, but, but it did get, it, it, it did enter you in some way and that it's there and it, it would take time, you know, the next couple of days, whatever, and it comes in, you may not make the connection, yeah. you know, the but. The connections are made sometimes faster or slower, depending yeah. on, just depending yeah. on what that is. 
Um, clearly, then I have a lot of things to sort through because I fall asleep every time. But no. anyway, anyway <laughs> I, I really, I, I am very fascinated by that explanation, and I'm, I'm actually going to read a little bit more about that because I find it very, very interesting. Yes. So yeah. um, right now, we're just going to take a quick break. We're going to take a 30 second break. Okay. Um, for those listening, please stay, stand by. 30 seconds will be over in 30 seconds, and we'll be back again with Emmanuel Lopez. Everyone has a to-do list. What's on yours? Get kids dressed, fed, and to school. Finish the presentation for an important meeting. Pick up dry cleaning, buy groceries for dinner. Where are you on that list? At one time, you were a priority. Yet, now you're an afterthought. If you're ready to put you on that priority list again, want more balance in your life, more freedom, fulfillment, and fortune? Louise H. Reed can help. Book a complimentary discovery call today with Louise at www.louisehreed.com. And we are back. Thank you for staying tuned. And for those of you just joining us, this is the Louise H. Reed Show. And we are fortunate today to have with us Emmanuel Lopez, who is talking to us about how he uses Hollywood movies as inspirational learning tools. So we're exploring his backstory and exploring his lists and gaining a little bit more insight into how Emmanuel came to be aligning his passion and purpose. So thank you again, Emmanuel, for, for, for joining us today. My pleasure, happy to be here. It's just been a, it's been a joy. So I wanna go back and I do this all the time. I, I kind of go back to certain things that you may have said earlier in the conversation because we, you know, we explored it a little bit further. But there was a question that I, I didn't uh, that I didn't ask that I want. And I've got a burning a burning question, okay. and that's around your top twenty your, your, your movie lists. So you've yes. got some top twenties, and and I know um, that you have a top twenty list or a top list for women. Talk to me a little yes. bit about that. Uh, yeah, it, it actually. The list came out for several reasons. Uh, one, I was invited, I had the honor uh, of being invited to the city of Vaughan's uh, International Women's Day conference uh, for two years in a row, actually. And I believe I was the only male speaker there. So <laughs> it was- That's great it, though, I love it. Yeah, and uh, you know, I, I put together a list that included uh, Aaron Brockovich and Freedom Writers and Wonder Woman, and uh, and 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 more. Yes, uh, I was so happy. Hold that up again. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> so those watching on Facebook can see that I'm drinking my coffee out of a Wonder Woman mug. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, and I actually have a Wonder Woman poster behind me. You can't see it, but um, but like that movie in particular. You know, let's highlight that. It, it, it as you may have, no, have known that. I mean, that became Wonder Woman, the movie. The movie version with Gal Gadot became a cultural phenomenon. I mean, it it was not only an, a really entertaining film; um, it, it it was just so full of inspirational themes that I was happy to recommend and write about and and feature, you know, on this 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 top twenty list. Uh, and it's specifically a top twenty list for for leadership for women. Um, because the other reason I'd mentioned before was that um, I have another list for top 20 leadership movies for, for men. And, and what's interesting is when I was doing my research on these two lists, I realized that most of the lists of these, these top movies for leadership online were mostly male driven movies. Right. And I said, that doesn't, that doesn't feel right. You know? So, so I feel it's, my calling to to change that you know and be part of the movement that that one wonder woman did was was that uh i remember on twitter just seeing the phenomenon of of uh movie screenings um and and how how they were being hosted you know to encourage uh, kids you know to see these movies and um, and then of course it, it it translated to other movie phenomenons like Black Panther, you know, and, and how that reached you know the the so many people and, and just bringing people together 
over these these movies and specifically superhero movies. Um, so anyways, yeah, so that's why if you go to uh, my, my website, moviesformotivation.com, go under motivational themes and then you'll see uh, leadership. So when you click on leadership, you'll see two lists and it'll be a list for leadership um, for men and then leadership for women. And then it, they'll have a list of the, the blog tip numbers where I had written uh, a specific story about how that movie affected me and, and how it can inspire people. So I, I keep saying how powerful this is, simple and powerful. <laughs> I, I, I'd love to hear a little more um, when, without necessarily revealing the company. Tell us a little more about how or a situation where you've gone into a company. Talk, talk us through what you actually do with a business. Uh, and how it is that you use these tools to motivate them, because there'll be people listening now who may be leaders themselves and, and may perhaps you've piqued their interest and understand a little bit more about what you could do for that. Sure. Uh, yeah. You know, most of the time they need a motivational speaker and they, it could be a specific topic like resilience or, um, or perseverance or something to do with, with the culture, you know, just improving the culture. And, um, and so it, one in particular, uh, I don't mind uh, sharing who it was, um, Doctors Without Borders um, asked me to come in and, and talk to their team because some of their team actually goes out, uh, you know, to places like Africa yeah. and are dealing with such uh, traumatic, times and adversities and, and, and sites. And I mean, anyone who, who knows about, you know, Doctors Without Borders can, can, can even empathize. So, so here I am, you know, like I, I knew exactly, you know, what to do, you know? And um, what was interesting was that I, I, when I was sharing how movies, you know, can be used as, as inspirational tools, I listed uh, my, my top 10 feel good movies and one of them was Guardians of the Galaxy. Hmm. And I, again, it's another superhero film, but uh, <laughs> uh, I'm that's just a how this, is, this is how this is how coming out in this interview. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, and, and one of the, the, the people in the audience um, told me afterwards, said she was really happy that I mentioned Guardians of the Galaxy because she said that that's one of the movies she watched in, in, when she was, she was in Africa. Um, they watched it, you know, their team, you know, watched it and, and it really helped to re-energize them, to revitalize them. And, and, and I just, I had to hug her, you know, because here was somebody that intuitively knew, you know, yeah. the power of movies. And so, so I feel that that's, again, my calling um, to be able to, to share that as a tool that, um, that other people may not even realize it, even though, again, there are stories of this, this the, the CEO for Telus, you know, that that shared that his the movie Master and Commander to, to inspire his his managers for leadership and teamwork. And and you know, my my goal is to be able to travel around the world and, and do the same and, and then talk about these the movies that were shot in that country or that city. You know, so I'm many gonna, ways you can explore and peel back the layers of these movies. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I mean, it, it really is a bonding tool, which is why, you know, another reason that's sort of underlying my talks, you know, whether whether it's a, you know, for uh, for um, annual general meeting that I, you know, that I uh, have talked to many audiences like that. It's it's you know they come to a year end or they're they're moving into a new year so they do need motivation and and so yeah I I, I share specific movies actually tailored for that audience as well as maybe some of my top ten lists. So through through all of this through all you have experienced in your life thus far, what would you say is, a, is like is the biggest lesson that you've learned? You know. Excellent question. And you'd, you'd actually mentioned this earlier and I'm glad I could bring it back is I believe we're all meant to go through some darkness. Um, that's whether you want to believe it or not, it's, 
I think it's why we're here, you know, why we signed up for this life, um, because what, how we're going to learn to get through this is what we're meant to share with others. You know, whether you share it as a profession or you've learned how to get through the, the pain of losing a loved one, um, somebody's going to need your help in that, um, and you're going to know it. It's that random act of kindness feeling. Uh, actually, I just want to share this, that Dr. Wayne Dyer had, had uh, shared that I love. And it's the idea that a uh, random act of kindness um, affects people in three ways. And the first is that when you do a random act of kindness, and for instance, you, you, you're on a bus and you see somebody who needs a seat and you give that person a seat, you've made that person feel good. Mm. And then second, you feel good in return. And then third, somebody witnessing that random act of kindness is going to feel good. So, so that ties into, you know, what I've learned um, in that, and again, it connects with Groundhog Day and what Bill Murray's character learned in the end, how he broke out was, was to think of others first, yeah. is, is how can you be of service? And, and, and so, so even though I'm still traveling through the darkness of clinical depression, um, that's what I do my best to think of. Like I, I, I know I'm feeling pain, uh, but how can I help somebody today? Yeah. How? Thank you for sharing that. I, I truly believe that it's through our pain comes our purpose. Yes, yeah. Our pain comes our purpose. And I too have, uh, that's how I came to find my purpose yeah. was through, um, it wasn't through depression, but it was through some other situations <laughs> that would be the would be the topic of a different show. So we won't go into that, but yeah. through, you know, a variety of things, kind of all these, these this, it was a perfect storm and a variety of things all colliding that yeah. really brought me to, to rock bottom. Um, and so that there's, there's clarity there that well, the, with, with that comes clarity. Um, and yeah. then there's a choice and then there's a choice to make. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is why I'm so glad we're doing this show because, uh, because you've got a, a, a wonderful format here because, you know, there are people listening to us live. Um, and yet later, this is, I mean, this is being recorded so that this, we, uh, you know, anybody around the world can tap into this. And, and we're talking about universal, time, timeless themes and solutions here. And, and so, you know, thanks to your show, uh, I'm going to do, I'm going to, to continue to, to, to share the link to the recording. And, um, and, and, you know, just the idea that some, something that you or I have said in the show is going to help somebody tomorrow a week from now or even years from now well thank you and i and i agree which is why this is my favorite hour of the week oh yeah so I, I, I have i i have been saying that for a little while now i have the you know the good fortune to have people like you on on my show and i, and I feel like i'm a bit i'm a conduit to help spread mm -hmm. the goodness yes. um the good messages and the, and the and the positive things individuals like you are doing and being in this world Yes. Um, I also feel like it's a way to show, you know, if you are unhappy, depressed or unhappy or whatever you, wherever you are on that continuum, you have choices yes. and people like you, you, you are a living example. And through you sharing your journey are showing people that, that you made choices to get where you are now. So someone might go to your website and think, wow, this guy looks really successful. Well, it was, it was work to get there. Yes, and I and I like to explore that little bit of the backstory, and I, I appreciate you sharing what you have about your backstory because everyone can identify with experiencing pain at some point. Yes, yeah. Um, thank you for sharing that because dialogue is so important. You know, it's you know when I was when I was diagnosed with clinical depression back in 2015, and um, just to share with your listeners, it was it was CAMH uh, here in Toronto that I went to and. And they, one of other than than prescription antidepressants that they recommended, what really worked for me was a 15-week program called cognitive behavioral therapy, 
And um, I want to mention that because it, it was an incredible program that it was all about dialogue and discovering that there was a community of people that I could talk to and also hear their stories and how um, it gave me the courage to be more open about this in my movie blog uh, and also my motivational talks. And, and so it's just, just the way this is, this was the cards I was dealt and in that I'm, I'm happy to do this because since then I, I researched online about, about mental health awareness around the world. And I could not believe how there is a need for more dialogue and how um, the Royal family, uh, um, Prince Harry, or I think he's a Duke now, uh, or, and his brother, um, they're huge advocators yeah. of, of mental health. And I've already reached out to them and, and hope that we can have a discussion about their favorite movies. Um, but it is, it's a worldwide, I don't know if it's phenomenon or, or a it's a human, of, it's a human thing, right? Yeah, it's part yeah. of being human. Yeah. Like depression is, is, it's a worldwide crisis that, that I'm glad social media is, is putting it out there. And, and I do want to share something re recent that somebody brought to my attention because they know that movies as well as my love for food is what gets me through. You know, we haven't <laughs> talked about food yet, but I do have my list of, of top 10 movies uh, uh, about food um, that you can see. Have you overlaid on. that on which movies and which food go best together? Uh, oh yeah, you, you know, I mean, we could, <laughs> that's a whole other topic. And, uh, but I will say right away, big night, big night, okay? That's one movie. But I wanted to, to share that um, they said, I needed to listen to this, this podcast by um, by Dave Chang, and he's uh, he is a uh, he's famous for Momofuku the the restaurant, mm -hmm. but he was also a really good friend of Anthony Bourdain, and as you know, there was a lot of news about his his uh, sad suicide that uh, that occurred, um, and how it was it was linked to to clinical depression. And I listened to his podcast and, and apparently, you know, I never listened to any of his podcasts, but he, he said he was apologizing because it was a downer. But for me, it was, he was, he, it was great, great. He was, he said there was more dialogue that's needed. He, he misses his friend and he, he feels that he needs to do this. It's like, if you're in trouble, you've got to reach out. Mm -hmm. um, and if you, and, and more importantly, if there are people who know somebody who is suffering in some way, it's like, like you don't have to like make them see a psychiatrist or make them get help. But it's in my mind, I felt like his podcast was saying like, you know, you, you just got to reach out. And if you can recommend a movie, you know, it might be like a secret movie that you know uh, that is going to be inspiring that that you saw as a recommendation from my website. It it may make a difference in yeah. their in their world, and and so I mean he so so this is a man that Dave Chang is somebody that I want to be able to to reach out to and 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 just say look you know uh, thank you you know thank you for doing that podcast because because it, I, I just know it, like him doing that podcast has, has made a difference in somebody's, somebody's world, somebody's life. And, and you raise a good point. We just don't know how what we say and what we do impacts others. Yeah. And so be more, you know, be, be the good you want to see in the world. We you know, we know that, we know it's a very, very famous quote, be the good you want to see in the world. Yeah. Yeah. And it's actually one of my, my favorite, my favorite quotes is be the change you want to see in the world. Be the change, like, you, want, like, be the change you want to see in the world. I so I, I have a question for you, but I'm going to answer my question before you do. So okay. <laughs> I, I, I believe the world needs more openness, kindness, and authenticity. Yeah. And I, and I come to that from what you would, you know, on the heels of what you were just saying, because I think when we are more open, more kind and more authentic, yes. that allows for true human connection. Like the spirits, yes. uh, 
you know, the, the true spirit of, of individuals can be, can be connected and, and, and potentially healed. Yes. Um, what do you think the world needs more of? Well, good question. You know, without a doubt, it's, it's gotta be the dialogue of truth. You know, and I, I say that just because there's a lot of stuff that's happening politically in, around the world, and I won't get into the specifics, but we already know because it's <laughs> constantly in the news and how, how the people who are maintaining the truth and speaking about the truth will eventually prevail. And, I, and that, is, that is the number one message that, that comes out in a lot of my top favorite movies you know, and so movies will continue to embed that in the popular culture. And, and, you know, I, I love that term red herring, you know, it, you know, when somebody throws a red herring, and it's basically something that is, is, is meant to just throw you off, off the truth, off, off course, off, off of, of the focus. And so that's the focus. And so, and, you know, and I've learned that personally, is that I, I needed to accept the truth that I had a mental health challenge. And I say mental health challenge rather than me mental illness because I do believe in law of attraction and, and believe that, that specific words are, are uh, programming ourselves. So, I, so I, I refer to it as a mental health challenge. And um, once I accepted the truth of that, then I believe the truth of, of my purpose um, beyond just being a, a creative person is, is unfolded. And I think without that acceptance is blocks. All your energy yes. goes in, into to denying the truth. Yes. And then yeah. once you accept that, the, the options, the, just the floodgates really open. The options, yeah. uh, uh, the doors that are then available for you to go through uh, yeah. are large, they open with ease and they more, and as through your, through your example, they help to align passion and purpose. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so it's it's hard to believe that it is now the top of the hour. Wow! Um, I know. We, I, I, to, I know. I told you this coffee date that we had would would just would be you know we be over before we knew it, and, and so, it, <laughs> so it has come. And so I wanted to say, Emmanuel, thank you again so much for your openness, for sharing your joy, for doing what you do, um, and for spending this hour with me this morning. Oh, it's my pleasure. Uh, it, as I said, you know, I'm imagining that people watching this uh, or listening to this, it's it's going to make a huge difference in their life. I, I believe so, too. Uh, and for those of you who wish to reach out, you can reach Emmanuel. How, Emmanuel? How, what uh, I definitely with? come uh, to my website, moviesformotivation.com. And um, if you want to contact me further about uh, speaking at your organization, you can contact me there. Um, and again, you know, if, if you know somebody who's suffering, who maybe they love movies, uh, I've, got, I've got the perfect tips already on my website. So please, you know, share, share the link as well. Reach out, reach out and share the love. So with that, Emmanuel said it best, reach out, share the love. Um, I am encouraging all of you to be brave, be bold, be happy as I do every week. Until next Tuesday at 11 Eastern Standard Time, I'm Louise H. Reed, wishing you all an amazing day. Hey, bye.